in this video i'm going to explain the management of the diabetic ketosis and hhs this uh, whole algorithm has been taken from uy 2019 sep to ck edition and as you can see i have simplified this table into a good flowchart form so that it is very easy for you to remember in the u word it is given like this as you can see the table is like this which is uh, like quite difficult to remember and it is confusing as well so i simplified the steps for you so as soon as the patient comes to you with abdominal pain nausea or vomiting and the blood glucose levels are more than 500 or like any elevated highly elevated levels of blood glucose you should have a high index of suspicion for dka or hhs in such patients for the type 1 diabetes mellitus it is going to be dka whereas in the case of the type 2 diabetes mellitus it is going to be hhs now, the first and the foremost step you would uh, go for is to order the ABG. So you would have a serum electrolyte panel by your side uh, to calculate if there is an ion gap metabolic acidosis which is very common in these patients because they continuously vomit and uh, there is electrolyte disturbances so uh, like uh, hypokalemia and bicarb levels deranged it is so damn common in this condition. So after that you have confirmed DK or HHS through the ABGs and the blood glucose level is already more than 500 so that is confirmatory after that the second step although it is the most important step I would say uh, start the patient with high flow 0.9% normal saline as well as start the initial continuous IV insulin infusion so two things you have to start as soon as the patient comes 0.9% normal saline as well as initial continuous IV insulin infusion now with the IV insulin I must tell you one thing that first of all you will start with IV insulin but as soon as the glucose level comes down to less than 200 or if the patient is able to eat or the anion gap is less than 12 or the serum biocarb levels are more than or equal to 15 milliequivalent per liter you would switch to subcutaneous insulin that is basal bolus and uh, next condition that uh, comes to us is that if the serum potassium levels are less than 5.2 milliequivalent per liter as we all know the normal values of serum potassium these are 3.5 to 5 milliequivalent per liter so if it is less than 5.2 because you have to take it as a fact that all these patients with DK and HHS are almost potassium depleted even though they have normal levels so you have to start the IV potassium but if the serum potassium is less than 3.3 that is hypokalemia which is way more evident here then what you have to do is you have to hold the insulin because what insulin does is it uh, pushes the potassium inside the cells you know that and the levels in the serum will drastically fall and it would lead to cardiovascular those abnormalities like, uh, like arrhythmias and all so we have to prevent that thing after that the condition comes if pH is less than 6.9 that is it is going towards acidic side so you have to give bicarb otherwise you no need to give bicarbonate in such cases. Now if the glucose level comes down to less than 200 so I already told you one situation in which we can shift to the subcutaneous insulin provided the patient is able to eat or an gap is less than 12 or serum bicarbonate is more than equal to 15 on the other side if it is less than 200 you can add 5 percent of dextrose to it so this was the algorithm which was given a new word and i have simplified it for your uh, convenience i hope you like this video and for more such high yield uh, topic videos please subscribe to my youtube channel and do comment and like and please let me know what is missing and what all i can add to my topics so that i can make more videos for you thank you